Welcome back, true believers, to the Action Games and Comics Review Show. I'm Kevin. Pablo and Edwin, my Spanish compadres, they can't be here tonight. I'm joined by the Action Games and Comics Chief Independent Correspondent, Aaron. How y'all doing? All right, Aaron. We're here tonight, and we're talking about new comics. We got a little bit from last week. We got some from this week. Basically, just want to get through this whole diamond you know, debacle and start talking about some of the books we missed and some of the books for this week. So, Aaron, what do you got for us? Well, first off, we got two books that came in this week. We have The Rocketeer, the original. It's a reprint. It's got the three original stories from the first arc for $1. It's really good. I would pick it up. I, I, and I enjoy it a lot. Next, we have The Rocketeer Adventures, which is a new book that just came out. And we have three different stories in there with three very good writers and artists. And we have uh, John Cassidy for the first. And, you know, his stuff is very stylized. The next, we have Mike Allred, which you can already tell that's going to be good stuff. Mike Allred's, I mean, just high quality. Just how they've managed to take this character, like this old character that nobody's really done much with recently, and just breathe new life into it. Yeah, I mean, revive got, it, man. I mean, just you got high quality in this. I mean, you got Alex Ross for the cover. You got Mike Allred, you got John Cassidy. I mean, this is, and also... And then we have two pinups in here, right. man. And also, Mike Mignola did a cover for this. It just looks stellar. Right there. Boom. And then we also have another pinup, which is like a classic 50s pinup. Betty Ross, or um, Betty, 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 Page. Betty Page type of pinup. Just looks great. And I'm picking this up. I recommend it a lot. All right. Next up, we got Batman Gates of Gotham. By Scott Snyder. All right, this book basically deals with a little bit of like steampunk esque elements, with like some background on Gotham, leading in with the whole Wayne family, and uh, basically, I mean, it's just one of these like minis, like in the vein of like Widening Geyer and um, Cacophony stuff like that. Basically, like delving into the background of Batman and Gotham specifically. And it's uh, it's written by uh, the guy that wrote American Vampire, right? Right, exactly. I mean, just high quality stuff. And to be honest with you, if you liked American Vampire, obviously some of that was, you know, mostly from the, you know, the original writer. But I mean, his style is all over this book. Pick it up. It's really good. All right. Next, we have some classic stuff here. <laughs> we have Lady Death. And it is written by Brian Polito and Mike Wolfer. Mike Wolfer is one of my favorite artists of all time. High quality. And. It transferred over with onto um, the Boundless um, imprint. imprint for That's Image, and, or no, not Image, Avatar. Avatar. And um, it's it's excellent art. It's some of the best stuff I've ever seen. And I'm reading it. And within the next two months, now you know it's issue five, so we're you know we're reviewing it a bit on the late side. But issue seven will be the beginning of a new arc. Right. You know beyond the fact that. Avatar has, has managed to take a classic character like Lady Death. I mean, just fan loved character. I mean, like you know, like the old stuff with like Evil Ernie and you know Lady Devil and Lady Death and etc. I mean, they've taken this character that I mean, like to be, I mean to be honest with you, it was really mostly about the art. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, but well, that's what everybody starts with, right? Exactly. But and that's the, why they picked Mike Wolfer, right? Exactly. The the art is just great. Beautiful women. Halfway decent story. I, I, I was honestly surprised by it, but you know what? Avatar and their imprints have always upkept like a very high quality when it comes to writing and creator own works. And you know what? Brian Polito, Lady Death. Yeah, and this is one of the first books I've seen Mike Wolfer on since uh, since Gravel. So right, exactly. It's high quality stuff. All right. Next up, we got Namor, the First Mutant. Number one. I wasn't a fan of the cover, but the art on the inside yeah. is. Yeah. Um, shut up, Scott. <laughs> really? Anyway, this is the annual for Namor the First Mutant, which my director, Scott, has just informed me. Let me talk about um, the art on the cover, I mean, is, uh, is pretty plain, you know? I wasn't really digging it, 
but I opened it up at the behest of my editor, Scott. And I started reading it, and to be honest with you, the, the story's pretty solid, and the art, I mean, the inside is just, it's just I wasn't high expecting quality, it. stylized stuff. I mean, just really, really great art. And you know, it features a lot of characters from all kinds of different comics. I mean, you got Secret Avengers, you got Namor, you got some X-Men characters, you know, and I mean, just really nice. And even better than that, which is something that I'm not really used to from Marvel, they have a little thing in the back here talking about the characters featured in the comic and where to look at them. So, you know what? For those people that, you know, don't often read comics or maybe just picked it up off the shelf, it shows you what comics, if they like the characters in the book, they know what to pick up. Aaron, what do you think? Uh, that That's... That's neat, man. Like, right. th there's not much, there's not many, many groups that do that, and that's that's why I, I actually like that. I'm not a big Marvel guy, though. Like, they, I they, 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 I'm not going to go into that right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you, man. It's kind of one of those hit or miss type of things with Marvel recently. All right, next drums. We got drums. It's an image book. It's a first issue, and. I did not know what to think when I first picked it up. And it's got a it's got very interesting art and a very interesting premise and it's got some TNA in it also. Right. Um the it's got some very interesting art. But I would test it out. I'm not sure what to think yet. Right. So I wouldn't subscribe to it just yet, but I would pick it up off the shelf and see if you like it. Yeah, I mean uh, I'll tell you it has a little bit of like the the whole voodoo you know, Haitian type of like Santeria. Concepts. Yeah, right. Like, you know, like Serpent in the Rainbow type of, you know, like hoodoo hitch doctors and stuff like that. I mean it's it's pretty cool. I've ne know? I've never heard of the uh the author or the uh right. or the artist. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with Yeah, I mean it's not too bad. Like if if you're into the whole the whole voodoo thing, you know, something like the the personal horror aspects. Dealing with it, I mean I, I would definitely say it's a first issue. Pick it up, see what you think. I mean you can't go wrong. Yeah. It, it's it won't hurt anything. Right. All right, next we got Invincible Iron Man 504, Fear Itself. All right. Fraction, I mean, he's been doing a really good job on Iron Man consistently pretty much across the board. But this particular issue added a level of, of just, I mean, dark and horror aspects to Iron Man that, I mean, I don't, I don't personally think that I've seen in a long time. There's been a lot of that whole Kafka-esque type of themes with Iron Man going mm -hmm. back and forth with, like, extremists. And then, like you know, going into his own mind and like rejuvenating himself because he started going crazy, yeah. losing his memories. I mean, there's a lot of science in this book. There's a lot of futurist type of concepts. But this book, personally, brought a whole level of horror to Iron Man. I mean, you talk about fear itself. Kind of seemed a little hokey to me, you know, with the whole yeah. You know, some of these heroes and some of these villains are just chosen, yeah. and now they're you know these bad guys that they got to fight. When Marvel said that they said that they weren't going to do another event for at least two years. <laughs> I mean... The, the, the one thing I will say, though, is Fraction is one of the authors for Marvel that I will still read. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I would say, pick it up. I will obviously, if you read Iron Man consistently, you should pick it up. Yeah. But if you're the whole Fear Itself type of thing, I would say pick it up just for what they have for the Chosen in this. I mean, just... And if you're a pretentious oh. ass like I am and you read by author, it's read. got it's it's got Fraction's name on it. Yep. He's always he's consistently good. Indeed. All right, what do you got, Aaron? All right, next, a book that we got shorted on last week. <laughs> we have Cross you, Psychopath. All right, I'm a huge fan of Cross. I read the original when it first came out, and then I read the I I don't know I've got it all. Family on my matters. Book. Family matters. Yep. Yes. Um. It's always been good, <laughs> and. If you like gratuitous violence, gore, <laughs> and horrible things happening to people, you'll like Crossed. If you don't, don't bring your children near it yeah. either. I mean, um, like, uh, to, to be honest with you, about and this the art's book, never bad, right? You know, to be honest with you, about this book, something that's just like just weird about this one is the fact that Cross has really focused on the human element of the characters dealing with these horrible people that are trying to butcher them and do horrible things to them. And then they bring in a, a, a sociopath. A sociopath that is just, con just constantly imagining doing horrible things to these people and even trying to lead them into the cross way. I mean, this just adds a whole another level of really messed up content to cross, which is what the series is known for. 
So and it's the reason why I read it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, most people. I it's mean, it's, it's fun. Honest. Right. All right. Next, we have Northlanders single issue, The Hunt by Brian Wood. This, you know, Brian Wood, man, just across the board. Has Consistently good. Right. He's never been bad on this book. I've uh, never uh, read uh, a bad book of his. Right, exactly. And, you know, to be honest with you, Northlanders, I think, is one of the most underrated Vertigo titles out there. I mean, people don't talk about it, really. You know, people don't blow it up. But this book is consistently one of the best. I mean, just hands down. Yeah, it's it's so good. Right. And talking about this one, this is self-contained. I mean... It's, it's a one-shot. There's... Right. There's nothing that you need to know outside of it. Exactly. And, and it, it, it's, uh. it's about a man. And him. it's a man wandering in... In solitude, you know, solitarily. S solitude. He's separated from his village and his, his, his family. He's trying to return. And the only thing in the middle of, like, the winter and his forces is one deer. And it's basically just in the mind of this guy that's subtly going crazy... Just trying to survive. Trying to survive and get home to his family. I mean, just expertly written across the board. Yes. It, love that guy. Right. What do we got next? All right, last one. Brimstone. Brimstone. All right. Now, this is the first issue, and it's Xenoscope. So, you know the art's going to be good and very stylized. Now, something that I really enjoyed is... It's in a time period that's not really written about. It's during the Civil War at the height, but it's not in the in the normal states. It's not where the two state where the two factions are fighting. Right. It is where it's over in Nevada during the during when they were starting looking for gold. And it just it starts off strong and then it just like all the like you see the characters and the first thing that I thought of when I saw the the characters coming together was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. If you like that type of story, you will like this. Oh yeah, the art, I mean, is just high quality. I mean, you know, you know, Xenoscope has never been bad about art. I mean, it's always very, very pretty books. You know, quality-wise for writing, hit or miss most of the time, but I mean, Brimstone is just very well written, art's beautiful, great content. I mean, just great concepts, yeah. just across the board for the book. I, I added it to my list. Right, indeed, man. Just really good. All right, next up, we want to talk about before we start touching on a little bit of the manga, or something that we haven't really done before, but we're gonna try out and see what happens. We have um, our action games and comics review of the week, but our rant of the week, which is. <clears throat> uh, can we? Can we, can we, can we so our action games and comics rant of the week is about Green Lantern Super Spectacular Number One. Okay. Across the board, Diamond and DC and every internet site, I mean, just try to Google it. You'll find the entry for the books that are supposed to be featured in this magazine S collection, which is, as I've written down off Google, is Flight by Jeff Johns and Darwin Cook, Alienated by Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Syver, The Secret Origins of the Guardians by John Broom and Gil Kane, and then Tigers by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. You want to know what we got in this book? You want to know? What we got in this book was Secret Origin by Jeff Johns, Alienated by Jeff Johns, Flight by Jeff Johns, New Blood by Peter J. Tomasi, and a couple of movie pictures that you can find online or in any magazine rag you can find in a gas station. Why? Why? Do you not like us anymore? <laughs> I mean... We went from having some like old school <laughs> Alan Moore stuff. I mean, which Alan Moore, I mean, he's like the god tier writer of Green Lantern. E even if they would have just reprinted one of his right, books, right. I would have been happy. Right, but, but instead they were just like, oh, well, you know what, the movie's coming up. So now we're just going to plug the hell out of the movie and just leave out Alan Moore, who if it wasn't for Alan Moore, me personally, we wouldn't have stuff like Black Knight or Brightest Day Now with Jeff Johns borrowing heavily on concept he's the only, he's the only reason why I'm Forever, even interested yeah. in Green Lantern. Right. I've never really been interested in, in Green Lantern before, and then I read his stuff. Exactly. And the Jeff Johns stuff didn't do it for me that much. Mostly because I'm not a big fan of his his style, but that's just me. Right. Well, you know what? Alan Moore, I mean... Opinions. Right. Say what you will about Alan Moore, but, I mean, he's one of the god-tier writers of comics in general. And Always. You know what? You know what? 
to take his story, which, however you look at it, either they took out one of Alan Moore's stories to replace with a Jeff John story, or, at the very worst, replaced one of his stories with a story by Tomasi. Who's that? I don't know. But hey, Scott, I who's know. that? <laughs> I do know, but I don't care. Alan Moore. What? Why didn't they... Why is those things? <laughs> I mean... Exactly. I mean, Alan Moore, you take him out and then you put in... I mean, it's just it's flat out lying. I mean, I, I think, all the way I think up. the worst case is that they actually took his stuff out and then just put the movie pictures in. Right, exactly. <laughs> they were just like, oh, yeah, Alan Moore, Alan Moore doesn't matter. So we're going to give you a couple of pictures that, that have been featured in every movie rag across the board. I mean, you got... What do we got here? We got, uh, oh, Hector Hammond. I mean, you've probably seen him in like the thousand trailers that have been all over television or the internet. And we got Sinestro. I mean, cool, obviously, Mark Strong, great actor. But why is this in the book, but not Alan Moore? Why? I guess I couldn't shake him upside down anymore. Thank you, DC Comics, for ruining my childhood. Thank you. All right, anyway. Now that I've got that on my system, let's move on to the manga. All right. So this week we had Gantz 13 come in. Now, Gantz, for those of you who who might be interested, is in a very similar vein to pretty much everything you've ever come to expect from the most messed up stuff you've ever read by Garth Ennis, <laughs> mixed with a very good hint of like Warren Ellis and then just stirred around with a tiny spice of Alan Moore. It's go it'll, it starts off good and then it just picks up and goes downhill from there. Oh, I mean definitely. Gantz has been consistently known for in anime or manga format as being one of the most adult oriented manga out there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're talking about like horrible concepts. I mean, this is like crossed without the the crazy undead overtones. I mean, this is just like themes of life and death and just personal horror and, and like just everything horrible that could ever, that one person could ever experience. <laughs> right. I mean, just flat out good. Quality writing, great art across the board. And you know what? If, if you love some of the more adult, creator own titles and comics, you should pick up Gantz. I mean, just great stuff. And it's printed by Dark Horse and they've been right. consistently good with manga since oh, yeah. they started, what, in the late 80s, right? Uh, yeah. or early, early 90s. 80s? Or early 90s, I want to say. And then we got Naoki Urizawa's 20th Century Boys. Which, the one of the best comparisons I can think of is the Incognito and... Criminal. And Criminal yeah. by Brubaker. Yeah. Um, Uruz Urizawa has always written the like crime drama murder mystery stuff oh, yeah. and he has never failed to write a good book yeah which you know what? Also, also 20th century boys they actually have um, a live action movie out for it they have done several different like tv series in japan about it and urizawa i mean he, he's done some of the best like monster crime, like i mean monster i mean and pluto and pluto for that matter i mean he, he's done just quality quality writing across the board and you know what here at action games and comics we 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 like to press comics, you know, and comics are our thing. But you know what? Manga, they're Japanese comics. <laughs> there's not much difference. <laughs> I mean, there's really not much difference. I mean, format is obviously different, you know, black and white, but you fit way more in just one volume. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just quality. It's, quality. it's, a, it's about the same as a trade paperback for right. almost half the price. Exactly. And they're... Um, and. Everything that I will ever talk about is always going to be quality. I won't push anything that's crap. Exactly. And you know what? Out of principle. And you know, so many comic book fans are, are like so weary of manga, which I mean, I, I really don't understand the whole ramifications and the reason behind it beyond the fact that, you know, it's I, probably a culture shock. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just people don't have the access. No retards. Right. It's either, <laughs> it's either one or the other. Mm -hmm. It can't be both for some reason. I mean, it's all comics, man. Just good stuff. You know, you get a chance, pick it up, take a look, see what you think. Just great quality. And we have the we actually have the best manga shelf in like sixty miles. I, I know, so. right? I mean, like <laughs> nobody beats our manga manga selection. I mean, straight up, even our statues. Yeah. I mean, you just look around here. We got plenty of like like PVCs and you know just high quality, you know, manga and anime related statues. I mean, you come down Action Games Comics, we got great discounts going on right now, and you should come down and check out our store. Well, 
Aaron, I think that pretty much does it for tonight. You forgot one thing. What's that? You didn't pick on Steve Niles this time. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Well, Steve Niles, <laughs> I don't have anything bad to say about you this week. Feel glad. All right, well, that's all we can say for Action Games and Comics. Join us next time when, well, I highly doubt that we'll have this kind of quality next week. But uh, feel free to stay tuned for our horrible, horrible opinions. Good night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna.